Well, we're gonna have a great time, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna have a really great time. We got a wonderful, wonderful show for you. We got a lot of vendors and stuff. Hey, you wanna tell them a little something about the vendors we have? Yes, we have two intermissions. So while you're enjoying your food, the formal fashion segment, the animated fashion segment, and the t-shirt, all this great stuff and singers that we have for you, we want you to take a look at your marketing book. It's gonna show you all the vendors, everybody who helped put this together, all the sponsors. Um, there's more information about each of the tables that are here. So celebrate them for helping this beautiful event and thank you again for coming. Hey, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There's no one else like you, right? There is no one. such a wonderful event. God, we thank you for the staff members that's worked so diligently, God, to put on such a wonderful event, Lord God. And Father, now we know that everything that we do, all that we are, is for your glory. So we pray that you would bless this wonderful night, Lord God. We pray that in all things you would be glorified, God. And we thank you even for the food that we shall receive, Lord God. Lord, we present this entire event into your hands. We thank you that we're leaving revived, refreshed, restored, inspired, and better than when we first came. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone
Let's just go one more round of applause for the praise again for the Academy for the great job. It's nice to see young kids in something positive. Amen. They always be getting in something negative. Kids out here bad today. How many of y'all got bad kids? Clap your hands. Just me. That's it. One on one. That's it. Uh, Miss Anika. She has flat twists on the side and a flat twist.
Ladies and gentlemen, start clapping hands right now. Everybody start clapping hands. Start clapping hands and give a nice warm welcome to Ayana McDonald. Used to think that I could not go on. And life was nothing but hand off the show.
All you ladies look so wonderful, you know what I'm saying? Y'all can take it down. I'm just telling jokes, right? I, I, yeah, y'all can just take it down. I'm going to tell some jokes for a minute. I, you know, I never did jokes with music in the background. It sounded kind of cool, though, you know what I'm saying? But ladies, I, I'm telling you, this is the natural hair thing. Is, I think they should start a movement for natural hair. It's, it's just like a beautiful thing. And I ain't got nothing against weaves. I'm just not a big fan of them, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like if a woman gonna get some, cause sometimes women go too far with the weave. You know what I mean? Like when they go on a hair show, like I, I went to pick this one girl up, she had a whole eagle weaved in her hair. I'm like, how you like my hair? I said, it need to fly away. That's what need to happen. You know what I'm saying? Then, then we got caught in the rain, now the eagle shrank down and turned to a chicken. Now I'm running around with a chicken head. It just, it's not beautiful. It's <laughs> a good thing, you know? And I also wanna tell you ladies, you are beautiful, but I hope your brains match your beauty, okay? All right, last few girls, I've been there. The last few girls I went out with ain't had too much going on upstairs. You know, I get out with the last girl, we put our stuff down here, she goes, I'm about to go to the bathroom to get some drinks. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You going to the bathroom to get your drinks? You know what I mean? The bar is right there. She's like, uh -huh. the sign on the door say restrooms for Patrons only. I said, that's Patrons, bro. <laughs> Like they got Patron in the bathroom. You know, I, just, I be going through it. Y'all don't know. I, I be going through it. And then I meet y'all materialistic women. Always want to know what a brother got. Coming up with your materialistic questions. But I like y'all too, so I came up with materialistic answers. You know, girl, run up on what kind of car you drive? I'm like, look, man, I got an act. Now she feel it, right? Now she, oh, girl, he got an act. You're right. He got an act. He all right. Treat me like a superstar until we get outside and you see what I'm really driving. That's when you start backing up. Uh-uh, I thought you said you had an act. It's a caravan. I said, I know it's a caravan, but it be acting up so now. You know, it's an act like it's something else. It's misunderstanding. I thought you said you had a made back. No, I said my car was made way back in 89. <laughs> I like this here. I knew this was going to be a nice event, though. That's why I want my best shirt for y'all. Yeah, this is my throwback right here, you know? And it ain't a throwback because it's old school, it's a throwback because I'm away at the day and throw it back on tomorrow. You know what I, mean? I don't change my outfits, I change the places I go. <laughs> I wasn't here yesterday, y'all laughing, I'm dead serious. These are today's clothes for tomorrow's people. Yeah, I see y'all clapping like, because y'all be doing the same thing, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna tell y'all, they added comedy to this because comedy always goes good with any function. You know why? Because when you laugh, you feel good inside, ladies and gentlemen, you know? And you ain't thinking about your problems. Because one thing we all got in here is problems. I don't care where you're from, what you're doing, we all got problems, you know? But this is what you do with your problems. Look at it like this. Whatever you're going through your life, look at it like this. It could be worse, you know what I mean? You're lucky to be sitting there with your problems. You're lucky to be sitting there, period. You're lucky to be born. You're lucky to be born human. You could have been born something else. Think about that. Take a second and think about all the stuff you could have been born other than human. Like, you could have been born a pumpkin or something like that. Like, you do not want a pumpkin's life, trust me, especially not in October. You know what I'm saying? Think about what pumpkins go through in October. You're a pumpkin in October. You can't come out your house without somebody bust you inside the head, carving your face up, putting a can inside your skull, making pie out your brains. You know what I'm saying? It's a war going on outside for pumpkins in October. You could have been born deodorant, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, think about a light deodorant lid. You get rubbed on somebody's armpits every single day. Sometimes don't even wash. He said, I'm gonna put you on, I'll be all right. You know, and then you lonely because you live in the cabinet. Who you gonna talk to in the cabinet? The pills, they high. You can't talk to the pills. You know what I mean? We all got problems. You know? I'm telling you, man, I got problems. I don't uh, clap your hands if you don't got problems. That's what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? Nobody said that I ain't got no worries. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I got a problem with my daughter. I got a 14 year old daughter. She can be all kind of problems. She just got her woman thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't even got a joke about that. I just need to tell somebody. You know? I'm going through it. Any of my fellas in here got daughters? Any of my fellas got daughters? How old your daughter is, sir? How old? 22? Yes, you don't went through what I went through. But they're expensive. She's still expensive, ain't she? Oh, man. Well, let me borrow your daughter, because you we can trade, because my daughter costs me all kind of money. I got her playing basketball, because I want to keep her mind off the boys, you know what I'm saying? She's going to come tell me, Daddy, you want me to play basketball, you got to buy me some Air Jordans. Well, oh, Air Jordans cost $200. I told her, you ain't really that good to get Air Jordans, you know what I'm saying? What about some Dikembe Mutombo's or something like that, some Antoine Walker's or something, you know? You know, she you want Jordan, like you want me to play. I bought her the Jordans because you can't say no to your daughter, though. I don't care how bad or good she is as far as your finances, you can't say no to her, though, right? If it's your son, you be like, get out of here, get it how you live. You know what I'm saying? 
Your daughter, you can't say no. Always spending money on it. And then let me tell you, she came to New York, stayed with me in New York for four days. She got the nerve to bring her little brother. He ain't even my kid. You know what I'm saying? You know, just like he magically became part of the package. You know what I mean? Every time we pick my daughter, my daughter mother pushing them both out of the house. Everybody gone. Everybody gone. I'm like, who's everybody? You know, got tickets for me and my daughter. I ain't got tickets for everybody. But I let him come, though, because he be on the porch looking on sand. I got a heart. You know what I'm saying? He on the porch looking sad. I'm like, man, come on, man. But the come on, man, it's like, come on, but come on. You know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, but come on, man. You know, because I do a lot for my daughter, man. You know what I'm saying? And if, that, if he did, that means I got to do a lot for him. Like, if I take her shopping, what that mean I got to do for him? Take him shopping. Too. The only problem is he don't shop like he understand that he ain't my kid. You understand what I mean? You know what I mean? We in the store, he talking about Marshall. I want this and I want this. I'm like, whoa, whoa, you are not a this and this kid, okay? And what you doing over here about the new video games anyway? You better come over here to the used video games. She gets Jordans, you get Skechers. That's what's <laughs> Some of y'all looking at me like I'm wrong, but I am not the father. You know what I'm saying? I am not the father. And I be going through it. I like this table right here. And I think my daughter mother get, get confused and think I'm the father sometimes. You know, because she's going to text me his birthday last week. I can't believe you ain't called Juju for his birthday. You're such a jerk. I said, well, did the Domino's Pizza Man call Juju for his birthday? Did the UPS Man call Juju for his birthday? Well, I'm the same as them, not the father. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> How you going through it? But we all got problems, man. Some of y'all got relationship problems. Uh-huh. We got a couple fellas in here who I want to help out tonight. I got my man over here. I got my brother right here. I got my brother over in the corner. A couple fellas in here. I want to tell all my fellas, the band, pay attention. I want to tell everybody in here how to win with your woman. Fellas, you win with your woman by realizing you cannot win with your woman. All right? All right, fellas. And the reason why you can't win with your woman, ladies, pay attention because this is the truth. They never satisfy where they got you. You know what I'm saying? Y'all always trying to get us somewhere else. You know what I mean? And we don't understand that as men, because yeah, yeah, it's the truth. It's the truth. Once y'all get us here, y'all want us here. Once y'all get us here, y'all want us here. Once y'all get us here, y'all want us here. When y'all get us over here, y'all don't even want us no more. You know what I'm saying? Then we over here don't even know how we got over here wearing a pink button up and slacks. We don't even like slacks. You know? But we all go through the same thing with our women. And we don't understand. We don't understand it because we don't understand how women look at us when they need us. They don't look at us as the strong men we stand in the beginning. No, that's what we think. Ladies, y'all look at us like we an old beat up car or something like that, a project y'all gonna fix up, you know? Y'all be like, well, he kind of raggedy, but with some rims and a paint job, I'll ride him, you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at us. That's how we all go through the same thing. We, my man right here, I don't know you from a hole in the wall, but I know you go through the same thing with your woman that I go through with my woman. I wonder about the E. Take that the E. We don't about the E. We never about the E. You so we don't about the E. We never about the E. My friends about the E. I don't about the E. I'm hurting about the E. Take me out the E. I don't about the E. You be like, okay, I'm gonna take you out the E. Where you wanna go? I don't know. You pick the place. Take some control. Just pick a place. Pick a place. Pick a place. Pick. You be like, okay, let's eat here. I don't have a taste for that. Why you wanna pick us? You never satisfied. And I can prove it to everybody in here. Fellas, you can be just dating a woman, right? Y'all just dating. She going out with her girlfriends. All you want to know is where is she going. You be like, baby. So, uh, so, uh, where you going? She like, excuse me? Hold on, we just dating. You ain't my man to be asking me all these questions about my whereabouts. I mean, maybe if you was my man, but you ain't my man. So what we do, fellas, we become her man. Because we want to know where is she going. Now, you her man, baby, I'm your man now. So, uh, where you going? Um, I don't see no rings on this finger. Gonna be asking my whereabouts like you my husband. I mean, I know you my man, but you ain't my husband. So what we do now, fellas, we marry this woman. Cause we wanna know where she going. Now, you her husband. Baby, I'm your husband now. Where are you going? You ain't my father to be asked. <laughs> you can't win. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get back to the show. Where's my lovely co-host? My name is Marshall Brandon once again. Thank you guys for uh, listening. I need to play the food. I want to sit down and eat some. Oh, you don't want to change. Yeah, y'all give it up for Stanley. She don't want to change. Beautiful. Now I feel like I need to change, but all my clothes might go in my car. <laughs> all right, so we go. We keeping it moving right along. What are we doing here next? Ooh, more surprises. 
Natural Curl, she's one of the innovators and had this vision to bring a natural hair show to Boston. Um, for me, it's one of the first in its kind. I don't know Boston to ever have done a natural hair care show, ever. So, um, big props to Love My Natural Curl booth. Also, please buy your $2, your $5, and $10 tickets. I know the $10 tickets have an opportunity to, to win a youthful steamer. for those chocolate and cocos, us mocha y negros, those beautiful blue-black jets and all the rest of my dark-skinned sisters who unfortunately seem to fail your paper bag test. Yes, the ones who this country thinks they can neglect. See, you forget that it was my African womb that gave birth to your American dream and that my hands picked the cotton that sold the fabric of your life and lies that I put soul in your music that I am gospel, hip-hop, jazz, and R&B, that I am Celia Cruz, Patti LaBelle, that I am every woman, I am Whitney, and that it was my lyrics and lyrics that blessed your national anthem and taught this country the greatest love of all. So why is it in America that us dark-skinned women, we gets no love at all, see? Our ebony essence is forced to stand eclipsed by your ignorance. My son kissed skin left unkissed by sons. Sons who are scared to kiss sisters their own mother's complexion because to him it's become a reflection of the dirt that America you attempted to kick in my face through your minstrel shows depicting me as a tar baby and most recently a housewife ho oh, oh how you have forgotten a dark queen's grace. Matter of fact you tried to replace my crown with an apron. I've been outcasted by the media only to be recasted as Medea and the help? No. See, America, because clearly you need the help, because I'm um, not America's main me, nor am I hip hop's hot and top Venus. See, 
Siraji Bartman and Nicki Minaj work for BET, not me. I'm educated, so I know my history that my body has been envied, examined, and exploited. Contradicted, remixed, and mimicked, and for centuries you made a mockery of these Afrocentric facial features and curvaceous hips, but now you're giving Angelina Jolie credit for her thick lips? Don't you think that I forget while you're watching Dancing with the Stars on NBC that it was me, the black woman. I put the slave steps in that samba, that I put the Afro-Cuban links in your cha-cha. That when you have a small piece of freedom, that I'm the sauce pois on the DE, that I gave birth to the word liberation, honey. I'm the mother of Haiti. So before you dare disrespect me or allow my dark skin beauty to go unseen, remember that as dark as night, I am the light. And tonight on this mic, I vow to represent for all of us chocolate and cocos, us mocha y negros, those beautiful blue black jets and all the rest of my dark skin sisters who proudly with flying colors fail your paper bag test. <laughs> Up here, one and a half people right now. I'm supposed to have a baby any second now, so forgive <laughs> me, all right? But um, I'm really happy to be at this natural hair event. Again, me, myself, I've never seen this happen in Boston. I've never seen, on a Wednesday, too. give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Next time I want to see this on a Saturday. I cannot imagine how much this would be to capacity. This is amazing. Um, this next piece I'm going to do, because I have gone natural in 2006. And I didn't do it just because I wanted to be natural. Actually, I was in college and the perm was too expensive for me, all right? <laughs> that was it. But um, I found myself, and I realized beyond my hairstyles, beyond the relaxers that, you know, there was a person under here that I forgot, you know, because I'm born in 85, people slapped the perm in my hair really early, you know what I mean? So I felt myself through finding my hair, and it's not that I'm against weaves or anything, I'm actually against relaxers, though, but, so this poem's called Permission for Relaxers. So I don't know when I might slip up and go back, you know? This is a bad habit. Take it one day at a time. So in 2006, I said, I'm done. I hereby solemnly swear never again to dilute the essence of my blackness with a relaxer which to me became an ironic type of name because it only led to tension. Tension on my edges, just like my pockets and patients slowly began to start wearing thin. So I decided I'm abandoning that liquid crack, checking myself into rehab and letting all my hairstyles to reflect, yes y'all, this sister is black. And I thought that whether I rock my hair in this press, a pan bread afro, some bar molly locks, boquisha box braids, or some big Haitian twist, I would only reminisce on those days in which I diluted the essence of my African roots. Roots every two weeks, I sat in this chair and I erased and disgraced. Pot and based, applied and rinsed. Over the years, I roller setted myself into such a tight curl that this black girl could no longer flow freely with the world, you see, the media. They made me hate myself because of my kinky, curly hair. They made me hate the way it would curl and whine, and I remember my mother became a magician using blue magic trying to silence my cry. So, you know, as soon as I got to college, I was like, I'm done. I'm going for straight weave. But as my straight weaves got longer, I, ironically, my self-esteem got shorter. You see, the self, you see, the extensions on my head, they only expanded my real-life problems. I was stuck like glue. Bonded by more than a weft, addicted to my hairdresser's liquid cool whip. But ever since I found self-love in this wide tooth comb, it's been like my soul has somehow found its path home. And I've realized that my hairstyle is only a small piece of my identity, but that's only because I accepted the prayer of serenity and realized that you cannot chemically change who God has biologically and spiritually made you to be. So I stood in that mirror and I cut away the pain, strand by strand, and for the first time in 20 years, I stood alone a black woman. My ebony skin in sequence with my kinky hair, I was a Nubian queen ready to be the hair, and yes, y'all, I finally realized what India Irie meant when she said, I am not my hair. Baby in there like, look, I'm, you better get home. We'll be, we're coming out after the next poem. We'll do one more poem. We're coming out. We'll do a, we'll do a poem called Wang. We'll <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going we're gonna to keep the show rolling, ladies and gentlemen. Y'all for a treat right now. Y'all for a very, 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 very big treat. I got 
My man coming to the stage, coming to, he's singing, Where Would I Be? What kind of God can make the morsels of snow fall from a gray sky? What kind of God can weave the tapestry of a rainbow and sketch it into a wet sky? It's a wonder how he can do every little thing he does for me. Before she come on for you guys, get your tickets because after the guest speaker, we're gonna um, start raffling out the prizes. So get all the goodies while you can. So good. All right, so we're gonna move right into the to our special guest speaker, ladies and gentlemen. Start clapping your hands right now. Start clapping your hands. You're beautiful, Audrey Davis, see my soap.
chosen to be anywhere in the world tonight and you chose to be here. So thank you so much for coming out. I'd also like to give a special thank you to Ms. Marie who invited me to be here today and her staff for putting together such a wonderful event. So if you guys could just give a round of applause for Marie. Thank you very much for putting together this beautiful event. And so I would just like to start things off with a quick question for you guys. How many of you have tons and tons of hair products underneath your bathroom cabinets right now? Products that you've tried over the years, products that may have worked, may not have worked. If you're like the average person, you probably do have hundreds and hundreds of products underneath your cabinet. But the unfortunate thing for most of us is that although we've spent so much money on our hair, we've tried so many different products, we really have not seen a return on our hair care investment for all those dollars that we're spending. And that really is for a few reasons. The first reason is that traditionally, products have not been formulated with our hair types in mind, especially if you have kinkier or curlier hair types. The shampoos that have been traditionally formulated for ethnic hair types contain lots of aggressive cleansers. The conditioners contain lots of oil that just lay on the hair shaft. And so there really isn't a focus on the moisture and the hydration that our hair really needs to thrive. The second reason is that we have a lot of training and practice caring for, styling, taking care of the well-being of straight hair. And for many of us, we're only now getting familiar with the hair, with our hair as it naturally grows out of our scalp. And this training and the care and the love of straight hair starts very, very young. How many of you guys played with dolls growing up? Or know someone who played with dolls? Yes. And how many of you had dolls that reflected your beauty in every way? They were the same color as you, the same hair texture as you, complexion as you, barely anybody. If you were like the average little black girl growing up, your, your dolls probably looked like this. She may have been brown, if you're lucky she was brown, but for the most part she had hair that went like this, and most of us wanted hair that went like this too. And so when you're coming from uh, learning how to care for this hair um, and then tr finally having to care for hair that grows up and out of the scalp, it can be challenging to find products and things that work for that different hair type. And then finally, there's so much information out there with the internet and the explosion of blogs. Everybody has a blog, everybody has a hair care website. It can be really confusing to know, you know, what is what. I mean, there's a lot of conflicting information out there. Some things that work for one person may not work for you. And so it can really be hard to know what to do. And so hopefully today we'll help clear up some of that information for you and get you started on improving the quality of your hair care. Okay, so in the next 30 <clears throat> to 45 minutes, we'll discuss um, the top three things that you really need to know to jumpstart your healthy hair care regimen. We'll also cover some basic hair science, and we'll keep it really, really simple because you don't need to have a PhD to understand the basics, that, the basic science that you need to care for your hair. Um, we'll also cover regimen building, and then go into some breakage reduction strategies as well because breakage is the number one enemy to healthy hair everywhere. Okay, so what I would like to do, and I always do this in my talks, is to take a quick survey of the room just to see who's here. And this also helps me to tailor my speech, and it also helps you guys know who's sitting around you. So if you guys could participate with this, I'd really appreciate it. Um, if you're currently transitioning, or you are currently relaxed right now, currently transitioning natural, currently relaxed, please raise your hands. Okay. Okay, so that, there's a few of you guys here. Okay, if you are currently natural and you've been natural for less than five years, raise your hand. Okay, so there's a lot more of you. A lot of you naturals in here. And me included. <laughs> okay, so if you've been natural for longer than five years but less than ten, raise your hand. Okay, so that's a little bit smaller than that last group. And anyone here been natural their entire life? Okay. Most of us are only now reclaiming and getting reacquainted with our hair as it naturally grows out of the scalp. So there's a lot of trial and error that's required, and it's, it can be really hard to figure out what to do, but we will 
help you guys get some quick things that you can take out of here today to jumpstart your retro. Okay, so these are going to be the top three takeaways. If you forget everything else I said tonight, if you fall asleep in the middle of the presentation, these are the top three things that you need to remember. Um, we do, we have 30 to 45 minutes here, and it's really not enough time for me to tell you everything that I want to share with you, and it's not enough time for you to really take in everything either. So we'll, we'll keep it down to these three main bullet points that I want you to remember. So the first thing is to think silk and not jeans. And what that means is you have to think about your hair in a different way. You know, traditionally, natural hair has been considered hard and tough and very, very durable. But we have some of the most fragile hair on the planet, and it really requires a gentle hand in order for it to thrive. And so you want to think about your hair as if it's the most precious silk blouse that you have. You wouldn't treat a silk blouse the same way that you treat a pair of jeans. You wouldn't wash it in the same harsh detergents. You wouldn't toss it around. You know, you wouldn't use a lot of heat on it. So you really need to think of your hair as a fiber and treat it very, very carefully with a gentle hand. So think silk and not jeans when you're handling your hair. The second thing is that hair growth is not an overnight process. And this is one of the things that kind of infuriates me with some product companies because they really play on your emotions. They know we want longer hair, faster, we want it now rather than later. And so they, they give us these promises and as you can see, if you think about our community as a whole, it really hasn't, none of the things have worked. And hair, hair growth really does take time. If you see someone whose hair is shoulder length, that takes about two years of good hair care to reach that length. Somebody at mid-back length or waist length, that's three to four years of healthy hair care. So if somebody's telling you they can grow your hair two inches in one month, that's not going to, no, it doesn't happen that way. It takes a commitment to care, and it takes a lot of time to grow hair. Um, so lots of patience and lots of time. Um, the average hair grows about a quarter of an inch or a half an inch per month. So all of these claims about multiple inches per month is not true not an overnight process. And number three, this is the equation. If I, if I were to sum it up in an equation, this is the equation for healthy hair growth. Number one, you need to have a high moisture regimen. So that means you're getting moisture and hydration in the form of water in the products that you're using. Um, low manipulation, you want to keep your hands out of your hair as much as possible. And when your hair is natural, it really requires that you, you shift your thinking from how you did when your hair was relaxed, because your comb was your friend when your hair was relaxed. When you're natural, your fingers become your comb. And it's really important that you keep the manipulation down, because if you're always in your hair, you're always styling your hair, you're always doing things, you're going to have breakage. So that's just how it works. And then, of course, as I mentioned, hair growth is not an overnight process. It takes time. Um, and if you look at this equation, you notice there are no products listed. There are no brands represented here. These are basic concepts for growing healthy hair. You don't need a specific brand of product or specific, you know, um, a specific product at all. It really is, as long as your products are high moisture, then you will be fine. Okay, so I also brought some things to give away for you guys. Um, I have copies of my book. Now, this is a special edition of the book um, that we use in cosmetology schools. So this one is not available for sale. You can't buy it anywhere. These are the only few that I have with me. So it's a really, really special, special gift. Um, if someone can answer, the first person that answers this question, how fast does healthy hair grow in a month? Okay, I saw your hand go up first in the brown, <laughs> the brown jacket. Quarter to half an inch. Yes, and how, per month. Okay, so she, she's doing her level. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that was fast. <laughs> okay, so that was, that was the answer. A quarter an inch to a half an inch per month is a basic healthy hair. So if your nutrition is great, and you're taking care of your hair, this is the growth rate that you can expect to have with healthy hair. Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the science of hair growth. And this is really important for you to know because it will help you when you're faced with claims from product companies that, hey, we can grow your hair this fast and just use this oil or whatever. 
If you have this knowledge, you will be able to, to um, have better hair outcomes. Now, this is, a, this is a sentence that I wrote in the book, and it says that hair growth happens at the ends of the hair. Now, this may seem counterintuitive because a lot of us, when we think about hair growth, we think about the scalp, because the scalp is what produces hair. But the scalp, it, the scalp does produce hair, but the part where we come in, the part where we have the most influence, is at the ends of the hair and preserving the ends of the hair. And I'll um, explain this in the next slide. Okay, so hair growth is a twofold process. The first part is emergence from the scalp, and then the second part is retention along the length of the hair. Now, where we are falling short is really on that second part, which is the length retention along the ends. The growth and emerging portions are controlled by our genes and our hormones, and there really isn't much you can do about that. That's written in stone, and that's just how it is. Now your nutrition and how you're feeding your body and how, you, how well you're keeping your body up, that also plays a role in how your hair grows from the scalp. But it's not as important, of course, as your genes and your hormones. And you really need to just focus on that second portion of the hair growth equation, which is length retention. So in the black community, we don't have a hair growth problem. We really just have a length retention problem. We're not able to hold on to the growth that we're receiving over time. Okay, so these are the top five reasons that length retention is such a problem for us. Number one is chemicals. Chemicals are the number one reason why we are having such a hard time growing our hair out. And that is because of chemical relaxers, permanent colors, and things like that, they break down the hair's natural protein. And when you break down the hair's protein, you create a situation where the hair is not able to hold on to the moisture that you give it. So when you do moisturize your hair, it, it escapes from the fiber just as fast. And so you'll notice that if you color treat your hair, your hair feels drier. And that's because you're not able to retain as much moisture as you otherwise would. Number two is environmental. <clears throat> Now, most of the environmental um, stressors that our hair faces would include things like the sun, being out in the sun. And I don't know if you guys have really hot summers here, but in Texas and Louisiana, where I'm from, um, over the summers, our hair tends to turn red on the ends. And when I was younger, I really enjoyed that because my mom would let me color my hair. And so I thought, you know, I was grown because my, the sun had turned my hair red. Um, but that really is it's a form of hair damage. And so the sun is very, very hard on our hair. Um, another uh, environmental stressor is hard water. And hard water situations occur mostly in the Midwest, mostly in the South, but you'll also find water, hard water everywhere. And basically what that is is water that contains minerals that deposit on your hair. And when those minerals deposit on your hair, they block out moisture. And so they'll cause a situation where your hair products don't work anymore, um, and it really causes a lot of breakage. And you, you can tell if your water is hard if your soap doesn't really lather well or you have a lot of soap scum in your bathroom. That those are all signs of hard water. Number three is physical. Um, and the number one physical stressor would be heat use. Um, heat use works like chemicals, but on a less, but to a lesser degree. It also destroys the hair's protein structure, but not as hard as a chemical would. And so, if you're if you're natural and you know you use a lot of heat, over time your curl pattern will start to straighten because you're losing those critical protein linkages. And so. Um, heat really is um, a stressor to your hair growth. And if you are trying to retain length, you want to reduce the amount of heat that you're using on your hair as much as possible. You have to go with the box. Nutritional. Now, this is another thing. A lot of times people talk to me and they say, well, what can I do to grow my hair longer? And they want a list of products and things to do, but they're not eating well. And really, your body will, put, your hair will um, reflect what your body is going on, what's going on in your body inside. So if you're not eating well, your body is going to produce hair that is a lower quality um, type of hair, and it will break. And so it's really important that you um, work to eat more whole foods, and whole foods are foods that look the way they're grown. So that's um, uh, vegetables, fruits, um, and things like that. You also want to make sure you're drinking a lot of water. 
Um, and the, the, um, the rule of thumb for water drinking is your body weight in ounces. So that's how much you want to be getting in daily. Um, you want to stay away from processed foods and stay away from foods that are white. So that's rice, breads, um, processed sugars, and things like that. And the fifth reason why we have such a hard time retaining our hair strength is that our hair is very unique. And I'll explain that. Our hair fibers are flat shaped, so they're shaped like a ribbon. And that makes it prone to breakage. Other hair types tend to have more um, cylindrically shaped follicles. Ours are flat on one or either side, so that makes it a lot more prone to breakage. The other issue that we face is at the curls and bends. So wherever our hair is curling or kinking or bending, um, our hair actually gets thinner in those areas and then it'll thicken up in diameter. And so those create areas of weakness that are much more prone to breakage. And the really interesting thing about our hair is that even if we chemically treat our hair, it still remembers itself. So if you look at a strand of relaxed hair, you'll see that it doesn't stay the same thickness as you go down the shaft. It gets thicker and thinner as you go up and down the shaft. The third reason why retention is a problem is that our hair texture tends to be medium to fine. Now a lot of people think when you talk about texture, you're talking about the way the hair feels to the touch. But in cosmetology, texture refers to the thickness of your individual hair strands. Most of us tend to have fine to medium hair strands, which are a lot thinner than a coarse or a thick strand. And most people who have coarse or thick strands tend to be um, eight people from Asian races. So our hair strands are naturally thinner than other people. Now, one way you can tell uh, what your hair texture is is to compare a strand of your hair to a thread, a basic piece of thread. If your hair is about the same thickness of a thread, then you have medium textured hair. If your strands are smaller than a thread, you have fine. And if your strands are larger, of course, you have coarse hair. And then the, the last uh, characteristic that makes it so hard for us to retain length sometimes is the fact that our hair is very dense and affectionate. Uh, even though our strands tend to be smaller, there tends to be a lot more of them on the scalp. And they also tend to want to get together and hug and do all of those things. And that makes it really, really hard for us to retain length. Okay, so I have another giveaway question for you guys. And the question is, how many layers are there in a typical hair strand? Now, this one is a little bit harder. Okay, you back in the red jacket? Three, that's right. And the number of hair, the number of layers of hair strand you have depend on whether your hair is fine, medium, or coarse. And that goes back to this last slide here. If your hair strand is coarse, you will have all three layers of hair strands. So you'll have cuticle, cortex, and medulla. If your hair strands are fine to medium, you tend to only have cuticle and um, cortex. And that also means that it's easier to break your strands. So it depends on the um, texture of your hair. But that was correct, three. Okay, so now we'll get, we'll get into some basic regimen building. What you can do on a daily basis to get your hair back on track. Now this is a five step regimen building process. It's simply cleansing, conditioning, moisturizing, sealing, and protecting. And we'll go through each one of these steps. And of course, this regimen building process, it solves the top two problems that we have with retaining length, which is manipulation, because it keeps the manipulation down, and moisture, because this is a high moisture regimen. So for cleansing basics, we recommend cleansing every seven to 10 days. Now, if your hair is damaged, or if you are new to a healthy hair care regimen, we recommend cleansing more often than that, so maybe every three to five days. Um, whenever you're cleansing, you want to work in sections because being organized is one of those things with natural hair, you learn that you really want to keep your hair in organized bundles when you're cleansing your hair. Um, I, we recommend using moisturizing shampoos. And these are shampoos that are very gentle to textured hair. They don't contain sulfates, which are aggressive cleansers that really, really dry out the hair. And then if your hair is shorter or if you want it even more of a moisture boost, conditioner washing is also another method that works really, really well for building moisture into a regimen. And it's simply washing your hair with conditioner. Now a lot of people are like, well how do you wash your hair with conditioner? How does it get clean? 
Well, a lot of conditioners contain surfactants or cleansing agents, so you can clean your hair with a conditioner, and it's a lot easier on textual hair. For conditioning, we recommend conditioning every time you shampoo your hair. Um, and we recommend a method in the Science of Black Hair called the, com the Comprehensive Conditioner Coverage Method. And what you're going to basically do with that is you're going to apply your conditioner as if you are applying a relaxer. So you're going to go through sections, one inch sections of your hair, and apply conditioner starting at the bottom and working your way to the top. Uh, for water temperatures, you always want to condition your hair in water that is um, a lower temperature than the water you shampoo your hair in. And that allows your um, hair's cuticle to close down during the conditioning process. And we recommend that for natural hair and even relaxed hair, it's really important that you use moisturizing conditioners. These are conditioners that are going to contain emollients, they're going to contain um, aloe, um, glycerin, and things like that. So you really want to focus on make, making sure you're using deep conditioners that are moisturizing deep conditioners. Now, um, we also have reconstructors up here. So if your hair is currently color treated or chemically processed in any way, you're going to want to factor in some reconstructing conditioners. These are conditioners that contain protein, which help rebuild the hair after it has been damaged by a chemical process. For moisturizing basics, we recommend moisturizing the hair every one to three days. And of course, the, the frequency that you use for moisturizing your hair will depend on the hairstyle that you have or your goals. But in general, you, would, you should moisturize your hair every one to three days. Um, and this is a very, very important point here about moisture. Now, a lot of people say, well, I moisturize my hair with olive oil or I use shea butter. And those are great things to use, but they're not moisturizers. Moisturizers are water-based products, either water or a water-based product, and that is very, very important. Um, most water-based moisturizers will contain ingredients like aloe and glycerin. You want to avoid using mineral oils in your moisturizers and petrol atom. Those are inferior synthetic oils, and you really do not want them in your hair. Uh, when you're moisturizing your hair, again, you really want to focus on the ends of your hair because those are the oldest parts of your hair, and that is where your length is going to come from. If you aren't able to hold on to those ends, then you will not see uh, growth progress over time. Um, the fourth step is sealing. Now, this is what you put on after you moisturize your hair with a water-based product. And the sealing process really helps your hair hold on to the moisture that you're giving it. If you put a moisturizer on your hair without sealing it in, you really are going to not, you're not going to get the best benefit out of your moisturizer. It's kind of like getting into a shower, you take your shower and getting out and not putting lotion on. That's, you need that lotion barrier to keep your skin supple. If you don't put lotion on after you get out of the shower, you're going to be ashy. So <laughs> your hair works in the same way. If you moisturize your hair and you're hydrating it and you don't cover, put something heavier on top of it to help it hold, then your hair will dry out a lot faster. Um, the best oils to use on your hair are natural oils, um, and plant-based oils and butters are best. The fifth step and the last step is to protect. And this basically covers everything you do in your regimen. You always want to work with your hair in protective mode. So that means when you're styling your hair, you're washing your hair, you want to work slowly on your hair. Because if you're working quickly, you will break hair that is healthy and wouldn't otherwise break. So you always want to work slowly and give your hair time to adjust to your movement. Um, you always want to plasticize your hair before you start working with it. And that's basically just adding on moisturizer or oil. Soften your hair before you start trying to brush it or before you start trying to manipulate it. Um, again, you want to work in sections. When you're detangling, you want to detangle from the bottom up. And as I mentioned earlier, the best tools to use on our hair is your fingers. God gave us the best tools right here for styling natural hair. And that's because your fingers are organic. They can feel tangles, they can feel pulls, they know when to put more pressure, when to lessen pressure. A plastic comb cannot do those things. Um, so you always want to try to de uh, detangle with your fingers first. If you want a deeper detangle or you really need to get your hair smooth, then you start with your fingers and you work down to progressively smaller um, styling tools. And again, for your combs, you want to make sure, if you are going to use a comb, that they are seamless combs. Because a lot of combs, the cheaply made combs, tend to have um, seams running down the teeth. 
and they can snag and cause split ends and all kinds of things in your hair. So make sure you use them seamless combs. Um, protective styling, these are styles that basically protect the ends of your hair from breakage. Um, a lot of times people want to wear their hair down on the shoulders and what that creates is a situation where your hair is rubbing constantly and that leads to breakage. Um, in the Science of Black Hair, we talk about the shoulder length plateau. And that is basically the length that most of us get to before we don't grow, it doesn't look like we're growing hair anymore. Um, and then usually it's an inch or so above or below shoulder length. But that happens when we're constantly wearing our hair down and on the shoulders and not protecting it. Um, so you want to work with styles that are heat free, um, comb and brush free as much as possible, um, and styles that keep your ends hidden and out of the element. Okay, so this is the last giveaway question that I have, and if somebody could, oh, your hand was up a lot. Before I even finish what I was going to say. Okay, what, 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 name one of the five regiments. Yes, okay. So she, well, she was way, she got her hand up before it even, before it even processed. Oh, scream, she was up. Now in this section, we're gonna talk about how to deal with breakage, and this is the last section of this presentation. Now how many of you have heard of the moisture protein balance? Raise your hand if you've heard of moisture protein balance. Okay, so a lot of you have heard of that. Um, basically, our hair is made out of protein and moisture elements. The products that we use are either protein or moisture based to support that. Um, and so when you're building a healthy hair care regimen, you want to make sure that you're using a good balance of protein-based products and moisture-based products. But you always want to focus more heavily on the moisture-based products. So you can see from the scale, it takes a lot more moisture to balance out protein in a regimen. So moisture is very, very important for us. Now most hair care regimens look like this, where they have very, very little moisture and lots and lots of protein. And that's because a lot of the products out there that say we're anti-breakage or if you're having hair problems, those kinds of products tend to be really full of proteins. And that is not what you need. If your hair is breaking, more than likely it's breaking because you need more moisture and not more protein. So those products kind of instigate the, the whole breakage situation by giving you more protein and causing more breakage. So the way you can tell if your hair needs more protein or moisture is basically if your hair feels really dry and scratchy and you get a breakage that's really snappy feeling, that means you need more moisture in your regimen. Um, if your breakage is really gummy or your hair feels really, really stretchy, you will need to use more protein. Now most of you probably have never felt your hair feeling gummy or stretchy. Those are things that happen when you chemically treat your hair or if, you use, um, if you've colored your hair at all. Um, so most of us really, really need to focus on the moisture aspect of our regimen. If you're color treated or you use a lot of heat, then you'll want to add in more protein. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you guys for being here. And I'll be hanging around here if anybody has any questions or if I kind of grazed over something or you're curious, please feel free to come up to me. I don't mind. Just Come on. Give it up for one more time, young gentlemen. That's the kind of information that you don't just get every day. You know what I'm saying? You go on the internet, you, you know, put some in your head, you wake up, you got a ball spot or something. Like that, you know, this, this, you got the facts. It's good to be able to get the facts. Right now, we're gonna move the show right along. Um, we have the uh, Praise Dance Academy coming out, and they're gonna be performing uh, to make it live.
All right, we know y'all just, um, we, after, we wanted to give y'all a five minute intermission, intermission after the uh, guest speaker. We wanted to get the Praise Dance uh, Academy up here because they gotta go to school tomorrow. So, <laughs> you know, we, we, had to, we wanted to get them done so they could go home, do you what know, they gotta do. But we're gonna take a really quick five minute intermission Get your raffle tickets, because when they, when they come out and you don't win nothing, and you don't got a ticket, you're going to be mad. So get your raffle tickets, and um, five minutes, y'all. Go to the bathroom, do what you got to do. We're going to be right back here. We're not going to be, it's not going to be 10 minutes, not going to be 20 minutes, five minutes, and we're going to get back to the show. We got a little bit of show left for you, but uh, uh, it's, it's a really good part. Hello, how are you? Thank you for coming out. Get yourself, take a picture. This is wonderful. That's what I'm talking about. I'm just looking for my co-host. I went downstairs outside. It was freezing outside. It? It's a different kind of cold outside. Oh, she's changing? Oh, what, why are you talking about she changing? Like, you know. She's talking about, yeah, she back there. You just said when I was over there trying to get her to save some Patron. And she was over there at the bar. Like, hey, you ain't selling no liquor? They got soda over there. They need hot chocolate. That's what they need. It's freezing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it is, it's cold. You know it's cold when the police pull you over and make you get out and go to their car. That's, that's cold. This is a glass of red space you standing outside. <laughs> Homeless dude ran up on my car today. He was like, man, forget the money. Just let me sit in the back seat till the light changes. He didn't want no money. He just wanted heat. It's cold. I see a, a pigeon wearing another pigeon today. <laughs> It is freezing outside. All right, ladies and gentlemen, did everybody get the raffle tickets? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Who bought raffle tickets? Clap your hands if you bought a raffle ticket. Clap your hands. Okay, all right. Well, you know, I didn't buy one because I'm waiting. Y'all gonna say it's fixed, so I didn't. Plus, I, you know, I can't. I don't need no hair care products. I guess. So. I just need some waves, that's it. That's what I've been asking. I need some waves. Can I buy them off eBay or something like that? <laughs> How much it costs for waves? I just need three waves. All right. <laughs> All right. We're going we're gonna to keep the show rolling, ladies and gentlemen. This young lady came up and sang earlier. She's going to come up and sing another song for us. And I'm so happy because she did such a great job. Ladies and gentlemen, start clapping hands right now. Everybody, start clapping hands right now. Start clapping hands, everybody. Clap your hands at this table. Give it up for Ayana McDonald. How many are survivors in this room? If you're a survivor, make some noise. Say, I'm a survivor. One more time, say it like you mean it. I'm a survivor. I want to share this song with you. This is my single. It's available on iTunes. It's called I'm a Survivor. I want this to be an anthem. If you believe it, come on, wave your hands all over the world. I know you're tired, but hopefully this song will help to wake us up a little bit.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a nice round of applause for our models. They did a wonderful job. Let them hear it, ladies and gentlemen. Love my natural curves.